and that's Brandon Cooks, um, a guy who's going to new team here. Um, and I actually like it better than his opportunity would have been if he stayed in Houston. Um, where he is behind CD Lamb and the speed he brings this team and, and how shifty he is, he'll be moving all over the field, becomes an immediate weapon, in my opinion, for the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. He's going to flourish on the fact that CD Lamb's going to take top coverage from people. Um, and to know that you can get him at pick 91 overall on average right now is insane to me. It, it, sh- it should, but it's not. People are just docking him down more and more. It's, it's, it's the curse of being the wide receiver two on Dallas. It's always been that way for your Dallas number two receivers. So it's I just curse of being on like your sixth team in like eight, eight years, but producing every single time. Well, well pretty much. I, I threw out, I threw out this stat in the short. So for the guys that watch the short, you you should you should know this is his first year with every new team. He's been a thousand yard receiver. Yep. And I mean, it doesn't matter Rams, Patriots, Saints. Well, he's been in the league since 2014, and so you should throw out his rookie season because you know in his rookie season it was. I think he had 69 targets, 53 receptions, like three touchdowns. It, it was a small sample size. But when he got that, he got that full time role for the Saints in 2015. On he only had two seasons where he did, had a subpar season, and that was for the Rams in 2019, where again he was under 100 targets, and then for Houston last year, again 100 under 100 targets. I don't see him being in a position where he's under 100 targets at Dallas. Like anytime yeah, he's been over a hundred targets, it's over a thousand yards and it's anywhere from, you know, five to, to nine touchdowns. Yeah. I think that they, they lost Schultz. Yep. So I think a lot of those, I mean, the tight end that they have there is not bad. Um, but and he's, he's a young guy. Second, I think second year player. Um, but CD is going to take the top coverage and this is, where Brandon Cooks has flourished his entire career is like not he's he's a number one but not being the number one yeah um so he has a guy like CD on the other side what's interesting is CD and Cooks can play every position wide receiver position so CD had a lot of uh, a lot of routes run out of the slot last year Cooks has a lot of routes run out of the slot and they both line up on the outside so I think you can do a lot more with moving them around the formation getting different coverages on them and whoever has a better matchup is going to be feeding. I feel, I still think Gallup is there. This, this offense wants to pass. Like they, they are a good offense. Like people knock on the Cowboys, but they're a good offense. Yeah, and, they are, but they, they didn't, they just drop another receiver too. Uh, they cut somebody, one of the receivers. So I think they just did. But anyway, I just think, I think the receiving core has always been good. And it's, I mean, really everything's on Dak's shoulders here. And you bring in so you don't bring in somebody like Brandon Cooks to to sit the bench or to be, be your wide receiver three. This guy's an impact player. He's, he's no, I special. Think, I think that they were disappointed in what Michael Gallup. They thought Michael Gallup was going to be. They brought yep. in a true number two um, outside of uh, CD uh, that can that can win one on one matchups. Um, I think Gallup is still going to be used there, but I don't think Gallup outside of CD was was the answer there. So they bring in Cooks. They're still going to have Gallup involved in the offense, but Cooks is going to take a lot of that coverage. I think 100 receptions is, or at least 100 targets, is going to be yeah, yeah, is easily is done, easily done there. Um, I think a thousand yards. I, I would I would almost guarantee that he's going to hit a thousand yards. Yeah, it's offense. I I give him one K and like six touchdowns on a season. And again, that's yeah. that that's kind of that benchmark that we're saying for these guys here. Is like you can probably guarantee a thousand and six as their their floor. Yeah, for a guy that's being evaluated in the eighth round, that's perfect. That's yeah, like, yeah, ninety first overall in in standard scoring right now for sleeper ADP. That's wild to me that he's that yeah. far down. I mean, I have to scroll my mouse down to take a look at. It. And let's talk about the names that are around him: uh, Antonio Gibson, tight ends. I mean, he's got Juju. He's got Brian Robinson. You know, then you start talking about like these other guys i mean let me ask some... would you take would you take him over either of the denver wide receivers no i'd take judy over him 
Take I would Judy. take I would take Judy because Judy Judy shined last year. I think they're going to try and run that offense around him big time. I think they're going to try and get him the ball in his hands. I think this is a breakout year for Judy. Okay. But I would do a, I would definitely over Sutton because I just can't trust Sutton. He just couldn't create separation. He dropped a lot of balls. It just it wasn't a pretty season for him last year. I I like the consistency of Cooks. Okay. Um. All right, let's move on. I've got two more for you guys today uh, that we're going to talk about.